To Thee, O Lord, O my God, I put my trust. Let me not be ashamed, neither let mine enemies laugh at me, for none of them that wait on Thee shall be confounded. Words taken from the tract this morning. As we started our little series a few days ago, we are, as it were, in Jerusalem under the good king Hezekiah and the prophet Isaiah. We are surrounded by Syrians and they are wielding the sword of fear and they're trying to heighten the fear in our souls to get us to do something dumb, to join them or to give way to them. Now, when we're dealing with the passion of fear, it happens when there's a looming evil that we seem to be able to escape. So when escape seems possible, fear rises up to make us run away. So fear is a powerful human emotion that moves man to flee from looming danger that seems to be escapable. Also, we know some of the causes of fear we discussed yesterday. We label them as both internal causes and external causes of fear. Internally, they are caused by sin, lack of grace and virtue in the soul, as well as lack of a proper memory. We'll talk more about that one tomorrow. Now, externally, causes of fear can be things like our weakness or nakedness in the face of a stronger power. When you're surrounded by a superior force, you become afraid. We can also fear looming pain and suffering. We're going to undergo the knife and surgery, we get afraid. As well as forced detachment from things familiar. Family, our friends, our job, our, our homes. We become afraid of losing what is familiar to us. All these fears, these causes of fear, can rise up and work together to disturb our minds and our hearts. And as we've mentioned, the devil loves to use fear to disturb us, to stir us up so he can go fishing. He likes to fish in troubled waters. Fear is to the devil as honey is to bees. He attracts him. He comes around and tries to manipulate us. It's interesting to look at the, the communists. They're very uh, skilled at using fear and increasing terror in people. Why? Because they wanted to get people to submit to them. They wanted to corral the people and manipulate them to submit to the system. Thus, they heightened suspicion among people. That was one of the ways they increased fear heightened suspicion. They would even say that everything was conspiratorial. It's interesting. The communists would say, no matter what happened, if there was like a sour milk or something, they'd say, a wrecker is present. Somebody among you is wrecking the situation. Find out who it is. Instead of just human laziness that caused the, the milk to sour, they would say, somebody's doing this on purpose. That's communism. Heightened suspicion. Raise the fear in people and get them against each other and get them to turn each other in and to hate each other. They would also release criminals among the people or have the criminals control the political prisoners to heighten their fear because they were more apt to use violence and threatening uh, methods. They loved to use criminals. In fact, Stalin himself was a criminal, a bank robber, a bomber. Why? To heighten people's fear. Islam loves to use fear to make people what? Submit. What does Islam mean? Submit. People say, oh, Islam is peace. Yeah, when you submit to their system, you become under the thumb and live under fear. You no longer do anything. You're afraid. Communism and Islam have a lot in common. They want you to submit, give in. That's the devil, using terror to corral and manipulate people. So if we feel fear rising up in us, let's be on our guard and not give in to it. Let's stay the course. 
Whatever is in front of us, it's worldwide and it's inescapable. Let's be like that airplane pilot that stays calm, works with God to bring good out of the situation. And so fear dies down with acceptance of our cross and willingness to do something great for God, even to die a holy and good and even glorious death for him. Let's take an example, though, in history. One example we could find would be that of Hernan Cortez. Hernan Cortez had these ships full of men. They went to Mexico and he realized what they were up against. And he burned all the ships so nobody could escape. And once he burned all the ships, they turned their face toward fighting the Aztecs. And they were well outnumbered and outgunned. Nevertheless, they fought and they did something glorious for God. They put an end to the human sacrifice happening in Mexico City. That's an example. We sometimes have to burn the ship behind us. In a sense, God is burning the ship behind us now. There's no escaping. We're here. We got to fight. Now, David, as we learned yesterday, defeats Goliath with his own sword. David defeated the sword of fear held by Goliath with the very sword he held. But he had to do it by way of five smooth stones, which represents the five wounds of Christ. So with Christ and his coming, with his sacrifice, he's the lamb that was slain from the foundation of the world. We're made friends with God, such that nothing in all of creation can separate us from him. If only we love him and serve him. As St. Paul says so well, who sh shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or famine or nakedness or danger or persecution or the sword? No, he says, but in all these things we overcome because of him that hath loved us. We can conquer with these five wounds anything that hell and even all of hell combined can throw against us. St. John says, perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love is on the cross. And the more we neglect him, the more we find ourselves surrounded. Yikes. With Christ's perfect sacrifice, perfect act of love, we unite ourselves to it and submit ourselves to the cross. Nothing is lost and all is gained. As he says, everyone that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my namesake shall receive a hundredfold and shall possess life everlasting. With Christ's coming, with this perfect act of love on the cross, pain is turned into gain. We can die a glorious death for God. We can make our death count. Our sacrifices and sufferings are made into merits for the treasure of heaven, glorifying God and saving souls. Now, if we are afraid, which is normal human emotion in the face of looming danger, let's flee not from the looming danger, but let's flee to the wounds of Christ to hide there, never to be parted from his side. In the book of Isaiah, it says, our Lord speaking to Isaiah, who was in Jerusalem and was surrounded, I, I myself will comfort you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of mortal man and of the son of man? who shall wither away like grass. Be not afraid, I'm with you. And finally, from the litany of the saints, we hear these wonderful invocations. From thy wrath deliver us, O Lord. From sudden and unprovided death deliver us, O Lord. From the snares of the devil deliver us, O Lord. Through thy cross and passion deliver us, O Lord. Through thy death and burial, deliver us, O Lord. Through thy resurrection, deliver us, O Lord. Once again, if we are afraid, let us flee to the wounds of Christ 
to hide there, never to be parted from his side. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.